simple steps with simple ingredients very little prep time but flavorful extremely flavorful juicy and tender this is my new favorite way to make roast chicken and we'll make an equally delicious and simple pan sauce to go with it this is a must try for the busy holidays because it's so hands off I need a dry brine for our chicken, so let's make one. Dried pimento or allspice will do a lot of the heavy lifting for this recipe in terms of flavor. This is two tablespoons and I'm going to toast this. I also want a tablespoon of cloves. This has a similar flavor profile as pimento, but they work really well together. Next, place the pan on medium heat to toast these. Toasting spices enhances their flavors, making them more complex. You don't have to guess when these are ready because you will smell the aromas. This is going into the blender. I also want two tablespoons salt, three tablespoons sugar, A tablespoon and a half of red chili flakes for a little bit of heat. You're going to want fresh thyme for this. Like the freshest thyme you can find. You want the best flavor. I don't want my dry brine to get wet and clumpy so I'm drying these after I wash them. Also just remove the small leaves and softer bits from the thyme. That's good. Smells great. I'm going to get this in a bowl. We just need a few more ingredients. To the blended spices, I'm going to add two tablespoons garlic powder. This is a tablespoon of paprika, mostly for color. A tablespoon of chili powder to layer the heat. A tablespoon of coriander powder to brighten this up. And finally black pepper because black pepper. Mix that till it's combined evenly. This is a solid dry brine that's still good for even fish and red meat. Next up is our whole chicken and I want all of this to be juicy including the breasts and I want it to cook evenly. Spatch cooking or butterflying achieves all of that and in less time. A sharp knife works well but a solid pair of kitchen shears makes this child's play. All I'm doing is cutting out the chicken spine in a loving and non-violent way. Flip the bird, use your palm and a bit of extra pressure to break the breastbone and voila a spatch cock chicken. We still have to clean out the stuff out of the back. Yeah, that never break properly. You might have noticed that I didn't remove any of the fatty tissue. We need that. Fat is flavor and it helps keep the bird juicy. We can always get rid of it after it's done cooking. Alright, let's clean this up. I like to rinse the bird in a vinegar solution or with a lime or two. Here's the chicken all cleaned up. I'm going to pat this dry to remove excess moisture. Grab your dry brine and coat the chicken. I'm going in and coating every inch. It's really hard to use too much. Make sure you get the armpits. Armpits are always neglected. 
spatchcocking exposes all the chicken skin so we don't end up with soggy skin when we don't cook. This is going into the fridge to sit overnight but before that I want to make a bed for it. Slice green scotchy for a little extra kick and that scotch bonnet flavor. One slice medium onion and half of an orange slice. This is going to add some nice citrusy flavor. Make a little bed and place the bird onto it. We want the back as well. All right, that's done. Smells bomb. Place this in the fridge uncovered overnight so the brine can do its thing. A whole day later and this is ready. A brine deeply flavors and seasons the chicken so it's more flavorful throughout and it also tenderizes the bird and makes it juicier. Place in the oven at 300 degrees for one hour. This could cook completely in that time at a higher temperature but lower and slower also means juicier and more tender. Leaving uncovered in the fridge made the exterior dry and rubbery, trapping all the moisture just below the skin. I'm shooting for an internal temperature of 100 to 175 degrees. We are on trap because this has to cook for another 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to up the temperature to 375 degrees and give it some more time. overshot the temperature a little bit closer to 180 degrees but brining made sure we still end up with juicy and tender meat so it's not that big of a deal that's one very delicious chicken roasting a bird like this ensures that not only all the skin cooks but also that the breast and the dark meat finish cooking at the exact same time no overcooked breasts or undercooked thighs this is so juicy. Those juices are extremely flavorful. This is great as it is now. I could have this right now and be satisfied. But I'm not going to stop there. Let's use the juices to make a sauce. The chicken box still has a lot of flavor so I'm breaking that up and placing it into the pot. I'm removing the orange because it already did its job. Adding it will make the sauce a bit too bitter. Hot pepper and onions are good though. Just throw that in. Add a cup of tomato ketchup to give this sauce some body and a bit of acidity. Red striped beer. Add about a cup. This is so good. This is going on medium heat to reduce but I'm going to give this a quick taste. That's nice but a tablespoon or two of sugar will help balance this out. Next I'm going to let this reduce and get a bit thicker. Alright. That's great. The smell makes me want to drink this. Our chicken is still really juicy, so I think I can get away with not stopping here either. I'm going to sauce the entire bird. Like, really pour it on. And this is going back into the oven. Crack 
crank up the heat to 450 degrees and I'll give this about 3 minutes. Hit that with some fresh chopped parsley, introducing some freshness. And that's a bang of roast chicken. That's tender, really tender, and so good. I feel like I could have eaten all of this by myself. But in typical feed and teat style, let's plate this up. That caramelized sauce is exactly why I placed it back into the oven. The flavor of the sauce is so much more concentrated now. This is great with Kalaloo rice. A video should be out soon, so look out for that. And some stir fried vegetables. And there you have it. That's really one solid roast chicken. So yeah, this is something you should definitely try for the holidays. You can get so much more done while this is in the fridge or in the oven. That's really good. Spicy, juicy, tender deep flavors and that caramelized sauce is so satisfying this was so great a big shout out to my patrons on patreon and click somewhere here for another delicious chicken recipe thanks again squad for watching and i'll catch you in the next one